Are we live? All right, great. We are live. Let's give it a second and make sure right. everybody can find it. I don't yet see a live button. All right, we're just making sure our team has all got the has got their live button going. Oh wait, there it is. Got make it. Sure we're, make sure we're muted now. <laughs> yes, my my Facebook is muted. All right, very good. That's Kathleen, Rich. We know Tom's muted. And we got and I have Vijaya here, who's quietly. Hello, come back here. Hi, Vijaya. <laughs> who's quietly stacking up books that were pre-ordered. All right, Rich, give me the cue when it's time to start. All right, I'm in it. Let's let's roll. All right, welcome everybody to Comic Con at Home. Uh, I'm Jeff Smith. You know that if you're here, uh, and we are going to do a live signing here on Facebook. Is everything okay? Am I getting all the all the good yep, signals? You're good, man. Let's rock right, and roll. Excellent. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're, I'm going to start signing books, and every now and then, if uh, somebody has a question, you know, type it in, uh, and I've got. Ears, ears in my ears, people telling me uh, what your questions are. So the first one here, what do we got? We have Bone Coda. And this is for Stephen from Milton, New York. All right, Stephen. And he wants a smiley bone. Let's start with that. Rich, I'm not yet seeing any commentary. Do you see any? Yep, I got a lot. Hi, Vijay. Hi, Jeff. Hi, friend. Hi, from. Hi, Mr. Smith. Hello. They're coming in. I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing it. Oh, wait, here we go. Okay. See if I can get that so you can see it while I'm drawing. Oh, we've got some um, howdies from France, Terry Mornay. Hey, Terry. Terry is our publisher in France. And, and happy Comic Con at home, everybody. <laughs> Let's see. Nicolette loves your lava lamp. <laughs> Thank you. I had to turn that on at like 11 o'clock this morning in order to get it bubbling. Oh, it's still not bubbling quite yet, is it? I should have turned it on earlier. All right, very good. Dustin says, thanks for doing this. You're quite welcome. Thanks for tuning in. All right, up next, we have one of the, uh, the rare overstock books that is sitting in the warehouse in the back for 10 years. <laughs> but still fresh as a daisy. And, and, and I will show it off a little bit. So it's, it's the entire saga, unabridged, but it's the color version. So it's a one volume in color. Um, so it's the entire story. And on the front, we have you know, the, the, the classic scholastic version, little inset piece of art. And on the back is some, on the spine, we have the, uh, the seasonal uh, foil stamps. And then on the back is the uh, sculpture that Tenille, the character Tenille did in the kingdom of Athea to celebrate uh, Thorn and Bartleby helping uh, Thorn save the day. All right, so now this one is for Eli in Burnsville, North Carolina. All right. And we've got a question from Sam who wants to know if you have any trips to Europe planned I, I don't but that's mostly because of the uh pandemic and uh not much flying going on uh, but i know there are a couple of places that have invited me and hopefully i will be able to go back awesome. um, 
let's see. Naylor Lopez is asking if you could move closer. Perhaps if you could move the book closer towards the tripod. Uh-huh. Like that. Like that. And maybe yeah. you'd be able to see it then. Huh. Very good. Who, who said that? Um, Naylor Lopez. Thank you, Naylor. And William Pace is asking, uh, he'd love one of these oversized editions, which William, you can get those now on boneville.com. We've got the con special pricing um, and signings. We'll honor those till the end of the con on Sunday, which is about 5 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, uh, you can order even now. Uh, you can order up through Sunday, even though we will stop live signing on Saturday and we will continue to sign the books over the weekend and then ship them to you after the con. Looks good, Jeff. Yeah, that was a... Not bad, Lopez. Not bad. You have Derek, my 10-year-old son, Owen, loves Bone. And Mary Walker Clark wants to know, well, her son, Wesley, wants to know if that's a first issue under the tripod. <laughs> you spotted that. Yep. Hold on. Once, after I finish this, I'll show that to you. And Hugo wants to know if we have any plans to come to Mexico. And as Jeff was explaining before, you know, once uh, restrictions are lifted with the COVID virus, we hope to get out and see our fans in places we haven't been yet. Yes, very much. So, yes, this is a copy of first printing of Bone Number One. Nice. It's, you'll see it's badly beat up. Uh, and that's because this is my work copy. This is the one that ever since, you know, for 29 years, I've been pulling this out. And before I would draw each issue of bone, I would get this out and read it again. And you can see how yellow the pages are. So this thing has not been protected. <laughs> <laughs> well loved. This is a well loved beat up book. And I, and in fact, I have it out again because of the Netflix series. So I'm reading, you know, my work copies again, just because that's just what I do. So, and I have a little more to talk about that a little later. So who's next here? What do we got? Another big book. We have another big book and we have uh, the new book, Bone Adventures. So I guess we should stop and talk about that real quickly. Here is, so this is, this is a new book. These are like two, let's see, am I getting all crooked? How am I doing here? No, you're good. That's better. Um, I haven't quite got used to where this wire goes. I did a couple of uh, kind of picture books for younger people. And if you're, if you're a Walt Kelly fan, um, you can toggle back and forth while I'm talking if you want, Rich. Okay. Uh, if you're a Walt Kelly fan, you'll know what, I say, what I'm talking about when I say Walt Kelly's can't and no. There are these two oddball uh, books for younger people that he did with the characters of Pogo, except that I didn't do a record with it. He had a little 45 record in there, uh, but that's kind of what this is. So there's these two stories in here, this hardcover. It's a beautiful book done by Scholastic. Uh, nice big shots. Um, one of my favorite shots is coming up here. This one. Mm. And it's a uh, smiley flying with the birds. Whoops. Did I knock that off? Did I do something? Yep. You're back. Low battery. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while Vijay runs upstairs to find a plug, <laughs> I will show you this then. So here's the, it's got a beautiful dust jacket, and this is what I like is they took took that picture and made it the actual cover of the book. Awesome. And um, the first story actually is, I think you can unplug the, this. Oh, it is. Uh, oh, actually, that's not on. So unplug that because that's not, we're not even using that. Hey, professional comic books people, here we go. That's right. Doesn't reach, huh? Won't reach that? I have a longer one in, in my drawer up there. No? 
Okay. I just want to show you. So the other story is about the young bones. Uh, and I hope the color is showing up through this because uh, this is. was beautifully colored by, uh, by Tom Gott. Uh, and the three characters, three bone, young bone cousins are broken. They find a coin and then argue about what to do with it. And then the coin gets away. But this was a very fun book and it just came out like a month ago from Scholastic. Uh, and I'm very happy to be putting it back together and signing it for, this is for Theo. Uh, okay, in the boat adventure, Theo wants a Tad drawing. And then in the, the big book, he wants a phone bone. So let's do that real quick. Uh, Michael Cohen wants to know when Netflix is happening. Well, we got badly delayed by the uh, pandemic, uh, but we are starting. We had originally hoped to have something on the air in the fall of 22, uh, but it's probably going to be fall of 23 now, although nothing is official. We're just starting uh, trying to do it long distance. and um, but, but everything I've seen and we've talked about is very exciting. You got Diego saying hi from Italy, Jeff. Hey, Diego, how are you? And Garrett Chin. Hi, Garrett. He's hey, Garrett. Cartoon books. And Billy Tucci says hello. Two cheeseburgers. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Greetings from Portugal. Sweet. I have never been to Portugal and I actually want to. There's a, I hear there's a really good festival there. And Sam is also asking about uh, Netflix and asking if any voice actors have been uh, picked yet. Uh, no, we have had discussions, but we have not picked anybody yet. Vijay, when you're ready, that goes with that first Coda book. That first order that was a Coda book, that goes with that. All right. Oh, still have to draw this one. Hey, to everybody who's watching our Facebook Live, how are we doing? This is our very first time. Oops, getting a lot of thumbs up and happy faces. That's a good sign. That, that's good to see. Woo. <laughs> that's good, because I'm, I'm sweating bullets right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're good no pressure you only have 67 people watching you right now <laughs> virtual comic-con is as crazy as real comic-con let's see we've got greetings from tijuana a norwegian Ooh. in ireland it still won't reach can you set it up here or something or Pardon me, I'm just trying to, I'm helping uh, do tech over here. Yes. <laughs> but Jay explained, you are not. <laughs> but Jay is sweating bullets behind the camera. Yes, yes, she is. <laughs> um, we had um, some fans tuning in from Tijuana, Mexico. Yeah, I heard, that's exciting. From Norway, we were all over. Uh, and Brandon wants to know, uh, can you talk about your warm up process? What do you do to get into the groove of drawing or writing? Uh, I actually don't. I, I see that on, on Twitter all the time, people doing uh, warm up drawings. And I'm very impressed by that. But uh, I, I don't. I just jump in there. Uh, after all these years, I kind of like, if I'm not going to get paid for this drawing, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm only joking. I actually just, I pretty much just can jump in. It's, uh, I, I, I don't have, that's, I don't need to warm up. I, that is not to say that I don't often uh, have a hard time getting something right. Uh, but that's a different problem. In fact, I famously go back and uh, redraw things when I would 
collect the bone stories, the comics into graphic novels, I would go back and there was maybe a hand on Lucius or something that I was like, I hate that hand, but I'm out of time. I have to, I have to send the book to the printer to make it in time. Um, and when that happens, I, I just, when I, then I wait for the collection and I redraw that hand. I don't make a big deal out of it. I just fix it because I couldn't sleep at night with that hand. It just was, it was not right. <laughs> it not, not happen. All right. So now we have, this book is for Jonathan uh, in Liberty, New York. And he wants a phone bone. Can I do this? And earlier when we started, someone posed a pretty good question. Um, yeah. What characters do you like to draw that aren't your own? Uh, well, I don't draw too many other characters that aren't my own. But if you look in the borders of my uh, original art pages, sometimes you'll see uh, a Batman or a Bugs Bunny. Nice. All right, I want to say thank you to Vijaya, who is back here and has rehooked up the overhead camera to a power source. Nice. All right. Yay, Vijaya. Essential worker. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, Ward Vaughn wants to know, what do you think is better, traditional or digital for creating? Uh, uh, well, I have many young friends in comics. Uh, and they all work on a Cintiq. They all do digital. And uh, they, they have all tried to convince me uh, that you know, the working digitally is it's easier, it's cleaner, it's easier to make, it, make mistakes and fix them. And I've tried it, I've tried it. Steve Hamaker, who uh, colored Bone and Rassel, he, he was like, he showed me that he could ink just as good as I could uh, with on his Cintiq with a, with his electric pencil, whatever that's called. And uh, I tried it, and I'm there's the there's, there's this tiny tiny gap between the line and my point, and there's a tiny tiny lag. And I know they're improving that all the time, but I have to say that that's enough to. I, I've been doing a paintbrush dipped in a well of ink and drawing on a piece of paper for 35 years and it's too late for me <laughs> go on go <laughs> on without me <laughs> okay the pile you should see the pile is starting to build up around me here <laughs> all right so this one now is for where's his name brandon in brooklyn new york and he wants a red dragon. Ooh, and then he wants a Rassel hardcover. I don't have that, Vijaya. This order is for a red dragon and a Rassel hardcover. Daniel said if Bone could meet his favorite comic superhero, who would it be? Um, well, I guess it would be Batman. <laughs> Although I'll tell you what, I've drawn a lot of uh, spider bone. I, I, get I get a lot of requests for nice. that. And I also very much like Spider-Man too. So that's kind of cool. This is for Brandon. Fabio Moon, hello from Brazil. Ah, uh, hola mi amigo. And Rodrigo Salem wants to know, since Bone is set to become even more popular with Netflix, do you have any plans about spanning this universe? Uh, only in the small ways that I've already done, you know, like uh, the, the stories like in Tall Tales, where, they, where Smiley Bone is talking to the, to the little Bone Scouts and telling them tall tales about Big Johnson Bone. Those kind of things I think are fun and I'll continue to do those. Uh, but that's about it. It's, I, kind of, I kind of still want to draw the bones, but uh, I also kind of want it to be a single story that isn't really, isn't repeated all the time. I don't want it to be sequels and sequels. I, 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 don't, I want Bone to be done, but I can't, I can't resist doing little things like the new Bone Adventures book where they're kind of like just little standalone stories. 
And brother Randy is watching from Seattle. Hey, hey bro, what's happening? <laughs> That's uh, my brother, Randall Smith, recently retired from the aeronautical industry. Brandon. And I'm now going to do a Nikola Tesla for Brandon. Thank, thanks a lot, Brandon. <laughs> I see a Rassel books mixed up in there. Yeah, here we go. We got a Rassel. Also colored by Steve Hammaker. It's absolutely astonishingly beautiful color. Very nice. Very rich, very smoky, and very noir. All right, let's make Brandon. Nikola Tesla. And what does uh, Stephen Sorace, I apologize if I mispronounce that, wants to know what your favorite Pogo character is? Oh, well, you know what? I, it ch changes all the time. Sometimes it's um, Churchy Lafemme, the turtle. Love him. I love the way he's drawn. He's got such good construction. And I love his personality. He's always freaked out that it's going to be uh, Friday the 13th on a Tuesday this month. Uh, and then, then otherwise, it's though it's uh, Albert the alligator. That is a one-off character, man. Nobody's ever going to do a character as cool as that again. And I think the uh, fan whose uh, book you're sketching is watching with us. That's a great serendipitous moment. Um, he says it was between Tesla or a Dylan, not Dylan. Ah, <laughs> well, those are equally both just as hard. So thank you. <laughs> Karen said she missed you at San Diego Comic Con the last few years. Who was that? Was in Artist Alley. Thanks for all the encouragement over the years. Very cool. Let's see. No pressure, Jeff. You have 96 eyeballs on you right now. All right. No problem. <laughs> I can't see him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Who we got next here? We got. All right. Kyle would like a mystery cow. All right. Nice. Something. Mystery cow coming right up. Are you having a hard time answering my rapid fire questions and concentrating on your drawing? No, do, do I sound like I am? No, you're doing great. I'm just worried <laughs> I, I'm going a little crazy. Um, Michael wants to know if you could tell us anything about your current future plans for Tuki. Ah, well, that's a wonderful question. Thank you. Who asked that? Michael, Michael Forch. If Thank I you, Michael. Uh, yeah. I. I put Tukey on hold. It was a, you know, a web comic for uh, about three, three and a half years starting. I forget when was that back in 2014, I think. And uh, I, I kind of wanted to, I kind of, as I was doing Tukey and I reprinted it also in uh, a comic book form. Um, I realized that there was a lot going on in that time period uh, that I wanted to address. For one thing, uh, it takes place 2 million years ago when more than one species of human was alive at the same time, Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, uh, but only, only one came out of it. And I was, I was working on that part of the story. And then I realized at some point that man, we, we the surviving species, figured out how to control fire and started eating cooked food. And that started to change the shape of our body and made us less, you know, we started to lose our body hair. We started to lose uh, the extra mileage of uh, guts that we needed to digest raw foods. Um, and I wanted to explore that, that world a lot closer. At the same time, I started up a festival with Vijaya and Lucy Caswell in uh, Columbus here. called uh, Cartoon Crossroads Columbus or awesome CXC. Event. 
And we, we've done that for five years now, and we have another one coming up, a virtual one, just, just like this. So this is kind of like good practice for that. That is an excellent sketch, by the way. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, okay, if you say so. I love it. I hope Kyle likes it. Uh, Terry wants to know, how can you get a signed book from Jeff? So Terry, you could just order online at boneville.com. And in the notes section of the checkout process, you indicate how you want your um, book dedicated. Which one am I doing next? Kind of like. right. And that is good until the end of the show on Sunday around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, just to finish my answer about Tukey, uh, the what I what I was doing while while I was taking time off to work on this show, I started to rewrite Tukey and I reworked it. Uh, originally, I had about eighty pages done, and since then, I've turned it into a two hundred page graphic novel, and I've rewritten a lot of it. I was able to save quite a bit of the artwork from the original online version, uh, but I've rewritten it, and um, it's now a two hundred page graphic novel. It's 85, 90% done, inked, colored, everything. Um, so getting close, getting close on Tukey, very excited. No release plans yet. Uh, we'll probably make some kind of announcement next year. So uh, I'm excited about Tukey, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. Okay, this is a copy of The Art of Bone that Dark Horse put out. And Chris from Monmouth Junction, New Jersey wants a smiley. Oh. Gardner oh, Troy says my friend Dottie is one of the people who, who still has the bone football jersey. Oh, wow. <laughs> I remember that. Those are kind of nice. I like those. A lot of Smiley requests. There are times when Smiley is my favorite character, for sure. He, Absolutely. He's the funniest one. He's the one that, he's the only one when I'm writing, uh, it makes me laugh. I mean, you, you, you think that if you're sitting around writing jokes, you'd be laughing all the time, but you don't. You're not laughing at all. You're really working hard to make a joke, you know? And, uh, and when you get the punchline, you might go, <laughs> okay, that's good. But smiley, man, I would, the way I write, I, I kind of like just ping pong things like I'm, uh, you know, I just bounce things back and forth like I'm role playing and I'll just get the characters in the situation, I think back and forth and, um, and then Smiley will say something and just, I didn't, I didn't know he was going to say that and I, I just, I just kind of free associated and it just cracks me up. That's one way Smiley cracks me up. The other way is my wife will say something to me. And I'll just laugh my ass off. And then I'll make Smiley say that. You want to you lean in, Vijay, and say hi? Say hi. Here comes, here comes Vijay. Oh, she, no, you're, you got to go around the other way. So here Hashtag we go. Hashtag more Smiley yes. bone. That's what we need. Here we go. The other half of the team here. All right. So, yeah, so this is the Art of Bone book. If you've never seen it before, it's still being beautiful published. Book. It's in print by uh, Dark Horse. It's a beautiful hardcover book. It's got a lot of, you know, giant images. All right. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> if only I had a can of Goya beans right now. <laughs> All right. Let's see, Robert, uh, a fellow Columbusite, wants to know, well, he says, I know that you created the bones before writing bone. How did you know the story and setting were the one you wanted to use for those characters? Well, I drew them my whole life and I only just would, for fun, make little drawings. And I'm talking about like when I was in elementary school and in high school. Um, but as I got into high school, I, I stopped drawing stories and they would, just sometimes I would just draw pictures of phone bone just to daydream a little bit uh, or just to not worry too much. Uh, let me stop for one second and say this one is for David in Marionette, Wisconsin. And he wants 
a one volume edition. Good choice. Yes. Very good choice. And with a drawing of Lucius. Uh, it wasn't until college that I started to think I wanted to maybe try to draw these characters for a living. And I went to um, Ohio State where they had a, a student newspaper called The Lantern, the OSU Lantern. And there I was able to get talk the editors into running my strip and I was able to uh, draw the comic five days a week, which I did every day for four years. And in that, the story for Bone, it was, it was Bone. It was like a proto Bone thing. It was called Thorn at the time, but it still was the same strip. It starred the Bone Cousins. And um, uh, in that strip, it was mostly a fish out of water story. It had the same setting, the, the, the valley, you had grandma, you had the rat creatures and the dragons, and the monsters, all that stuff. And you had the three bones from Boneville. And it was the same kind of jokes. Uh, they don't hear, you know, it, uh, I have to, if I want chicken, I have to actually catch it in the yard and chop its head off. That kind of, that, those kind of jokes, um, which isn't so much of a joke for a chicken, but <laughs> the, uh, after a while, I, I, I started to think that wasn't good enough. I wanted some, I wanted a story that meant something that had some weight to it. that had an ending. Uh, and I did this, I did the college strip for four years, starting in 1982. It stopped in 86 and then didn't, then I didn't do the comic book until 1991. So there was about a four or five year gap where I was, I ran an animation studio and had other odd jobs. And I was thinking and working out, what's this story about? What's going on here? Uh, and, and, and eventually I came up with a story and that's when I decided, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this story. I've got the ending. I, have, I know what the middle of the story is. And I know a few different, like I'll call them tent poles that you would uh, go to. I knew rock jaw. The giant mountain lion. He was going to be the very center of the story. And I knew that at the end, I knew how that was going to happen. So I, I kind of had all these little bus stops that I had to get to as I went across the country. Uh, as long as I, I could veer off, and as long as I got to my correct bus stop, I was okay. And that's, that's kind of how I did it. That looks awesome. Is that our first Lucius of the day? First Lucius of the day. Um, Jason. Right. Oh, you're finishing up there. Go ahead. Uh, Jason says that he loved the piece you did for the Sakai project. Do oh, you thank enjoy you. I <laughs> had so much fun doing that. Uh, I know what he's talking about. I, we don't have an image of it to show you, but it, it was used. Um, it was like in a pinup section for a deluxe version of a, a collection of Usagi. And uh, of course, Stan is uh, one of my best friends in comics. And I, I've toured with him a couple of times. Uh, and I just love the character. And Stan really turned me on to um, Kurosawa, who did the Yojimbo movies and uh, The Seven Samurai. And I had recently watched um, Yojimbo which of course is where Usagi or Jimbo is, is, is so, sort of based on. And so I was asked to do this pinup. Um, hold on here. I'm, I'm doing a little quick sketch for Scott on a copy of uh, the Cartoonist DVD, which was a little documentary uh, about like the first 20 years of, of Bone uh, done by um, Ken Mills and Cameron James who did that. And also some friends of mine, Martin Fuller worked on this and he was one of my uh, animation partners back in the late eighties. Anyway, that you can still find this on our website. And what was the story I was telling? I forget. Oh, about the Sakai project. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was asked to do a pinup for this and I had a lot of fun. I drew, uh, you know, I drew Usagi standing there, very, very serious. But then I got to draw next to him, Bone as uh, is it Tashiro Mifune? Yeah, 
the guy who plays Yojimbo in uh, in Yojimbo. Uh, that and I just had a lot of fun doing it, and I love um, I love Stan so much. There we go. All right, which way am I going here? Albert said, "You, your wife, and staff have done such a great have done a great job at Cartoon uh, Crosswoods Columbus CXC. I look forward to returning and comparing our rings again next year. Ah. Thank you for all you do." <laughs> <laughs> What's it, who who said that? That was Albert. Oh, and yes, Wallace. Albert. Yeah, you got everything here. Yeah, Albert. Uh, on the very first uh, CXC, which was in 2015, uh, Albert. Uh, came up to me and he waved and we both had all these rings on. I think he had more than I did even, but we would definitely wrote a, here you go, man. There you go, Albert. That's for Scott. Christoph Space, Jeff, I have a question regarding the Rose prequel. You already spoke of the origins of the book, how you told Charles Vest the backstory when you took him on a visit to the actual old man's cave in Ohio uh, and how he got excited and wanted to paint that story. But I'm curious, when you actually committed the story to paper, were there any details you discovered about the characters or backstory that were new to you and that had any impact on the final act of Bone? That's an awesome question. Uh, That's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's uh, it, it, yes, it's true. Uh, I ended up uh, the the story of Rose that he sort of alluded to was uh, it was it, Rose was the backstory that I created for Grandma Ben that I had no intention of ever actually turning into a graphic novel. I just needed it because I needed to know the story of the kingdom, how she ended up uh, out in the woods with Thorn and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh and i i but but it was all based in this uh state park in columbus called uh old man's cave it's down in hocking hills it's near athens ohio where ohio university is and um i took uh charles to go see it because i knew he would dig it old man's cave is just full of ferns and all these crazy plants and the roots of trees growing down over massive rocks and lots and lots of moss. That's, oh, yeah. that's, that's a Charles Vest situation right there. So I took him there and while we were walking through and I could tell he was digging it, uh, I started telling him, oh, and in, in my imagination, I have this backstory for Grandma Ben when she was a young princess. And we're, this is in this little, there's a little part of um, Hocking Hills State Park uh, where Old Man's Cave is. It's sort of like a little rift, like a little uh, canyon that winds for about a half a mile. And I pictured that the dragons would have taught uh, the humans, at least the humans that were going to be in charge, like the royal family or whatever, teach them the secrets of the dreaming. And that, the, that Rose, uh, at part of her duty, her education would be to go there and learn the dreaming there. And I would point to places along the trail to Charles and say, oh, see those two trees standing there with a giant cool rock covered with roots? That's where she was standing when she was actually given the dreaming power by the dragons. And, I, and we're, I'm just blabbing along. We're just walking around and all of a sudden he stops me and he says, uh, I want to I wanna paint that. I want to paint this story. I want you to write it and I'm going to paint it. And I was like, okay. I mean, he's <laughs> only one of the best fantasy painters in the world. So that's how that turned out. Uh, and as far as yes, when I began to flesh out the story, some, it's not so much that it changed the ending of Bone, but the the story when the characters went, their pain went a little deeper than I was expecting. Uh, the backstory was, was darker than I thought. And I think if you read that, whether you read it after Bone or read it before Bone, I think it would change the way you read the ending uh, with, the, with the battle between these two sisters. All right, so there's Michael's book with a copy, with a drawing of Thorn. There you go, thank you. 
Oh, here's a new one, first for today. Um, this is to Rafa from Saba. Ja okay, and uh, it's, it's Little Mouse Gets Ready. This was a book I did, uh, gosh, I don't know how long ago, well, years ago, I did it for Toon Books, which is a, an imprint for emerging readers um, run by Art Spiegelman and his wife, Francoise Mouly, who is the art editor for The New Yorker. So she, she's the one that picks all the covers. And she did say, I was, she did invite me to uh, and submit covers for The New Yorker, but I, I never did just because I don't, I don't think in those kinds of, I think you gotta live in New York to do that. I know you don't, but I think the best covers for The New Yorker are people that live there. So this is to Mira. Oops, I might, I might have done them backwards. Oh, well, do you have another one somewhere? All right, okay. Sorry. We'll fix it. We'll make it right. However, I'll get this one right. And I won't talk for one second while I make sure I got the right book. This one is to Mira. And Mira wants a rat creature. I'll do that. Well, that's a good segue because Jason wants to know why quiche. Yeah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is uh, when I, I was telling you earlier, I was telling people, uh, oops, I started to draw Bartleby. I'm so used to it. That's easy to fix though. When I was, when I was doing the comic strip uh, for the OSU Lantern in the 80s, there was a little fad book that was very popular. Uh, and it was called Real Men Don't Eat Quiche. I don't know if anybody's heard of that or not. It was, like I said, it was a long time ago. And it was just a, it was just a silly little book. It, was, it had a bunch of jokes. It was not very good. In fact, I don't think I even read the whole book. But I just decided, uh, I just decided to make a play on that and have the, these monsters, you know, real monsters don't eat quiche. So that was the joke. And that started the relationship between the two rat creatures because one of them believed real monsters don't eat quiche. And the <laughs> other one was like, well, why not? Why wouldn't you? He was obviously a foodie of some kind. So, uh, so that's, that's where it came from. And I got a great reaction. People thought that was funny that these giant monsters wanted to eat quiche. And so it, it just stayed. And our friend Angel is on. She says, hi, Jeff. Angel, how are you doing? Let's see. Angel is uh, a friend uh, or you and a neighbor. I think she I think I think she's not living next door anymore, but was a neighbor of Tom, who is currently coloring Tukey. And uh, and Tom, do you want to say hi to Angel? I know you can hear me. I, did we make it so that Tom could talk if he wanted, or does he have to like run upstairs to like? The... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, Angel, if he can, Tom is waving to you. Believe me. <laughs> um, and Kevin wants to know. Uh, he is asking about the Tukey graphic novel, and he says, "I assume it will be full color." And has color changed the way you think about your cartooning? Um, not too much. Uh, that's a good, very good question. So now I have a new, I have a new copy of Little Mouse, which I do not want to make to Mira. Oh, I want to make sure I make it to Rafa, but I just remembered I also have to say from Saba. This one's to Rafa. Derek said, hi, Jeff. It's amazing what you can do with a Sharpie in under a minute. So inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I've been doing this a long time, Derek. I was actually at a, a panel in San Diego, oh, about eight years ago, and I was, it was basically live drawing with Sergio Aragones. And uh, there was like Sergio, it was up on stage, there was like 5,000 people in the audience. It's actually a very popular uh, uh, like panel. There's like 5,000 people in the audience, up on stage is Sergio, me, and like, um, like one of it could be Kyle Baker. At some years it was different people, uh, and then uh, out in the audience was um, ah, I'm blanking on his name. I want to say Scott Shaw, but Scott Shaw was on stage most of the time. Anyway, there was somebody in the audience asking for questions, you know, to draw draw a quick draw, and then and then we would all draw as fast as we can, and we would all and and Scott Shaw and me or Kyle Baker and me or whoever would would try to do our best to be funny, but. Oh my God, Sergio was always the funniest. And he had Sergio Aragones, if you don't know, is the guy from Mad Magazine who used to draw those little, little like uh, pictures into margins. And he can draw so fast. It's all he does is draw. Even if you go out to dinner with him, he draws on the table. <laughs> He's, he never stops drawing. But anyway, it, we used to have a lot of fun. But, and one time at that panel, uh, an audience, an audience member asked me, could you draw a bone with your eyes closed? And I said, yeah, I think I could. I've drawn them like thousands and thousands of times. And, um, and so the moderator says, well, good, do that, do that. Close your eyes and draw a bone. And there's, it's a similar thing like this where you can see above. Uh, and what I drew, because I decided to show off a little bit, was I didn't just draw a little quick phone bone head. I drew phone bone sitting on a log, reading nice. a book, with there was flowers growing at the end of the log. And I drew that with my eyes closed. And, um, and uh, wait, then somehow they wanted me to do, and oh, I, I, I didn't tell the story right. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The fact is I drew it and the only thing I had wrong was the book. That I got everything else looked just like phone nice. bone. It was amazing. Sorry, that was, I ruined that story. I'm, I'm sorry, Sergio. Okay, what do we have here? Dedication to the Wadsworth family. May you never lose your sense of wonder and find adventure in all you do. That sounds like me. <laughs> and then like a sketch of phone bone with Ted the bug on his finger. All right, that sounds very good. And this is from a little earlier in the feed. Uh, Andrea wants to know, what is the best memory of meeting a famous person or a comic book artist that you admired? Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Oh, my. Well, uh, I, would, I think I have so many. Um, oh, I remember. Wait, hold on. I got I to gotta spell the name of this family right. Let me concentrate oh, for yes. one second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wadsworth. May you never lose your sense of wonder. I'm trying to think when I draw a phone bone. All right. Beautiful. That's a big word balloon. <laughs> well, I think an exciting famous person for you was Linda Carter. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun. All right, I'll tell a couple of stories then, because I did. I met so many; it's impossible to pick one. Um, yes, yeah, so I was doing a signing at. Um, I don't remember the name of the chain, but it's it's equivalent to. Uh, I don't know, like Barnes and Noble in Toronto. Oh, Indigo. Was Indigo. That That's right. Thank you, Kathleen. And uh, 
uh, and I was doing a signing and it was supposed to just last for two hours. Uh, and after me, two hours later, Linda Carter was, you know, Wonder Woman from the TV show oh, yeah. was going to come in. Everybody knows that, right? She was going to come in. She was going to do a signing after me. She was promoting, uh, she sings, she's done some CDs where she sings some tunes. And uh, so that was the plan. Well, this was not long after I had just started doing scholastic books. And so I show up there and I'm, I'm mobbed. I mean, there's like hundreds and hundreds of children there with their parents. And so I'm signing and I'm signing and I'm like up on a little dais and people are coming and uh, I don't, I lose track of time. But uh, after all of a sudden I noticed there's some commotion going over at the front of the store and there's people uh, leading, kind of coming in and crossing and starting to go up the escalator. And with them, I see Linda Carter. And, uh, and you can't miss her. I mean, she's stunning. And she's got like these giant um, heels on. They're just, I mean, she's got, I mean, she just looks great. But they're taking her upstairs because I've still got hundreds of people, uh, hundreds of kids in front of me. And so they take her up to another place where she can do her signing. Long story short, she finishes her signing. I'm still doing this. And she, and I, I hear somebody say something to me from the side of the stage. And it's the manager saying, hey, Jeff, Jeff. And there's Linda Carter standing next to him. Linda Carter wants to say hi to you. Nice. And he, he sends her up. So she comes up on the stage and I stand up. And I don't know, I mean, she's probably taller than me anyway, but she was definitely taller than me when she has these giant, awesome heels on. And she just looks, I mean, this was not, this was, I don't know, maybe 10, maybe eight years ago or something. I can't remember. But she still looks fantastic. She still looks like Wonder Woman. And all of a sudden, spontaneously, cameras flash just start going off. And I, all of a sudden, we're, we're just standing there posing I, with our arms around each other. And people are taking pictures. And my favorite part is I hear some little girl in the audience say, they should get married. <laughs> 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 uh, and so yeah but jay I thought, thought that was hilarious <laughs> and um so that was a story of, of linda carter i think cartoons wise oh my goodness i've met so many of my heroes i met don martin um who actually came to see me uh the very first year i had a, had a, a bone graphic novel the very first graphic novel uh, out from Boneville. It was called uh, The Complete Bone Adventures Volume 1 back then. All right, I think I got took care of that one. What's the next one? Okay, this one is from Joab from the Netherlands. He has a job, a day job. Yeah. He has to go to work and he works as a chef and he would like you to do that drawing. You know, he, he has to go to work. So he has to so he won't get be... this signed at three. So. Oh, is it three? Yeah. All so right. Now, you better be there. Sign at three. Do you want to wait till three, three? All right. So what we have here is we are doing a signing for, hey, Rich. Yep. Do me a favor. I want to show these. I want to show this. Got okay. It. So we have a request, an order from, this, this is a Joep from the Netherlands, I believe. Yes. And he is a chef. So he has requested. <laughs> This drawing. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But he doesn't, he gets off at three, which is in four minutes. So we're going to wait and we're going to do that at three for Joe of the Netherlands. So we're going to do something else. Uh, so I met Don Martin. He came to my signing and I had my first experience with, you know, a line of people. And I had really, I had one person helping, which was Garrett Chin, who was here earlier. I don't know if Garrett's still here. Hey, Garrett, do you, remember, do you remember when we had the first book and people were like just mobbed around? They weren't, there wasn't a line or anything. And the people were just like reaching over other people's shoulders with wads of money in their hand. And Garrett was taking the money as fast as he could and handed the book to me and I was signing it. We were sending it out and we had never experienced anything like that. And this, and this couple comes around the side and I, I didn't really look up. I didn't really recognize that it was Don Martin and his wife. Uh, and I said, oh, you know, I, 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 you know, I've got this huge crowd here, but if you don't mind coming around, waiting in line, I'll, I'll sign your book for you. And they did. They waited in line. And when they came <laughs> up, I looked at them and I was like, what did you wait in line for? I mean, I leapt over the table. I literally did like, like I was a, a TV 
private eye left right over the table. <laughs> and, uh, and so that was a very memorable meeting of a, of a hero of mine. And I have so many, I could tell a million of them, but I won't. Because I got to get the book signed or I'm going to be doing this for 24 hours. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is to Derek, who wants a bone handbook uh, and a picture of Thorn. Right, let me see if there's a better place. So is the camera too far back? Should I lower it down or how is it? It looks okay. All right. It allows for those bigger books at the same time. Oh, that's true. Garrett said, hello, and yes, I'm still here, and sign faster, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> That's, which is what he was saying that day, as I recall. <laughs> My poor dog, the Wesley, the uh, Whippet Wesley Crusher. He's quite a... He can't quite figure out what's going on. Why is there why are there books stacked everywhere and cameras? Do I, do I and... hear him softly whimpering a no. little bit? No. No, I don't think so. Is, is he whimpering? No. Uh, <laughs> he got some uh, trazodone earlier. <laughs> All right, it is now three o'clock. I hope you're here, Joet, from the Netherlands, Chef Joet. We we're going to do a drawing of. Chef Phony. Did he leave his phone here? Oh no. Kathleen, I just heard uh, Tom's. Guess who? <laughs> Could you hear that? No. It was, guess who? <laughs> guess who? Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Craig Melendi. Is that a, a family member? Yes. Hi, yes, from it is. Hey, Craig. That's my cousin. He's my first cousin. What's happening, Craig? How are things out in sunny California? And Jennifer McCracken. Wow. Hey, Jen. What's happening? Oh, we got a blast from the past. Hey, we got to catch up, Jen. I haven't seen you in a while. And she uh, was sharing a memory of having known you since the Character Builders days. Yes. And that she went to a, a comic show at the convention center, and there was this huge crowd. And she was saying to a friend, wow, I wonder who the famous person is with the big crowd. And it was you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we met because um we we uh our animation studio did some work for her and we did some animation and then we just had such a good time working with her we oh my god we had brunch what every day with a couple other friends for freaking years and years and years All right, Joep, in the Netherlands. That's cool, dude. All right, so here we go. I hand that to you. Ah, so let's see, what else do I have to show you? I've got the, okay, so I was showing people earlier, if you're new to this, this was, this is my work copy of bone number one. And uh, it is, I get it out and read it whenever I'm like, I'm starting to work on Netflix scripts. So I got it back out. It's got the old yellowed pages. Isn't that crazy? And uh, it's the same one. I've been, I've been carrying this around and beating it up for 29 years. Now, 29 years. I'm going to show you something else real quick. You can put the camera and point it down there, Rich. Got it. So this 
Ooh. Let's see if we can see that. A little, a little something I'm doing, uh, hashtag 30 bone. Almost got a project coming up. And I might, might let little, little details loose about that uh, as we go through the weekend. Can you see that okay? Is that all, oh, yeah. Absolutely. That all right? It's, it, it is not finished. It's obviously, I've just, I still have a lot to ink on it. There's a lot of locusts in that picture. Yeah. Uh, now let's get back to the signing. Okay, we got, this is for Lindsay in Knoxville, Tennessee. Hello, Lindsay, hope you're watching. Uh, from earlier, uh, Jake had uh, mentioned seeing you a long time, seeing a long time ago that um, you mentioned Bill Watterson motivated you to draw bone. And he wants to know why did you pursue bone after his speech? Oh, uh, okay. or maybe he meant to say, did you pursue bone after his speech? Uh, either way, uh, I didn't, I wasn't actually inspired to draw bone by Bill. He was a, uh, I consider him more of a contemporary, even though he started his, his Calvin Hobbes in 86 and I didn't start the bone comic book until 1991. But the fact is in around 1984, he and I were both shopping uh, our strips around to the different uh, newspaper syndicates. I didn't know him at the time. I never met him, but uh, I, I, I talked to him later. Or I read later that that's when he was shopping it. So, uh, I'd, I was doing bone on my own anyway uh, before that, but uh, I was having a hard time finding a syndicate that was interested in publishing it. I really wanted to do a comic strip like Pogo or, or Peanuts or Doonesbury. Uh, and I just, no, I, I was not being, I was, have, I was failing at it. I'd been trying to sell it for, I don't know, like four years or something. When I went to the OSU festival of cartoon art, which took place every three years with Lucy Caswell, who was the founder of the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum, and also the Jayas and my partner in uh, the CXC Festival. Uh, Lucy Caswell had this show, and Bill Larson came and he gave this very uh, amazing speech. It was controversial in some ways. Um, it, it was no, it was controversial. Uh, but he basically was saying the comic strips are shrinking. The art form is being killed uh, by a number of factors. And a couple that I, I remember were the shrinking, you know, the commercial. They can, they, nobody in the, at, works with the newspaper and makes decisions about newspapers, cares about comic strips. They think anything that's a comic strip could have been better used to either tell news or sell an ad. And the other point was there was just all these uh, heritage strips uh, that were being passed down to like kids were doing it and I won't name names except that a couple of them were sitting in the front row and were very excited to hear Bill Watterson and he was like pretty much sticking a finger in their eye right uh, I don't know if he thought that but that they did and so it was a so it was a controversial speech I however was a, a light went off in my head because I was sitting there banging my head against the wall, trying to do a newspaper strip. And I was not being able to sell it, mostly because they either wanted to own the copyright and I would not allow them to own the copyright, or they wanted to get rid of Thorn, get rid of humans, because the bones and the humans, they didn't think they, they, that was a good mix together. So when he said, you know, the comic strip is dying, I'm like, hey man, you're like the leading comic strip guy. And I want to get into comic strips and you're saying, oh my God, you're saying my art form is dying. I, after his speech, I went outside, I left the building, I needed a break. And I sat for over an hour under a tree in front of the Ohio Union. 
And it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful, <laughs> Jay said it's a Buckeye tree. That's a, <laughs> that's a better story. I'm going to stick with that. I sat under a Buckeye tree and I just thought, you know what? I had only recently, like a year or two before, discovered comic book stores and self-published comic books. And I said to myself, you know what? Screw the syndicates. I'm not waiting for permission anymore. I'm going to go, I'm going to do Bone as a self-published comic book. It's an underground comic book. I don't care if nobody sees it, I'm going to get to do it. I, I bet there's an audience for it. I mean, the tick was out at that time and there was Cerebus and there were books like Love and Rockets that were more about an author's vision than about, you know, just a commercial appeal. So anyway, yes, that speech Bill Watterson gave in Columbus in 1989 was the moment where I stopped trying to sell Bone as a comic strip and began the process of making it into a comic book. And that was 89. In 91, in July, the first issue of Bone came out. That was a great story there, Jeff. Heck yeah, it was, man. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's keep going here. Is this the next pile? All righty. The pile shrinking at all? No. <laughs> this is great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. This is super exciting. Um, this almost feels like Comic-Con, to me anyway. Um, yeah, very exciting. All right, so this, we have a, we have a pile here for uh, Midget Man Sam. And does he say who he wants it to? But he doesn't say if it's a Sam Shipton, so it's for Sam. Anyway, and Sam, we've got your bone coda, which has the Abbey Bone picture nice. on the back. We have the uh, the documentary. Oh, and uh, Sam is from the UK. Hello, Sam. I don't know if you're watching at this point. Uh, the handbook, Bone Adventures. Ah, and the legit children's book version yeah. of smiley bone yay it's gigantic oh and i opened up to the right page <laughs> awesome all right let me let me hit these real quick here so in smiley's dream book actually the fan that you're uh, autographing for is in the feed and he says sam please sam you want sam please all right here we go. Hi, Sam. You want to try that again? Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, Sam. How's it going, <laughs> buddy? All right. He wants a cow suit. An angel wants to know what's your favorite Disney character. Ooh, uh, you know what? I I actually know the answer. It's Uncle Scrooge. Nice. Now, and Uncle Scrooge was uh, well. Actually, he's. Uh, I was going to say he's not in the cartoons, but he is. He's a uh, uh, what's that show called? Ducktales. Uh, but I never watched Ducktales. I because that started when I was in college. But when I was a kid the very best comics of all were Uncle Scrooge comics drawn by a guy named Carl Barks. And Milo is asking a very controversial question. Yeah. You want to know what does Boneville look like? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, uh, I think it looks like um, Duckburg. It based on the stories by the same artist I was just talking about. Carl Barks used to do Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge comics in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, and when I was reading them in the 60s, 
they were mostly reprints from the 40s and 50s and they're amazing and they're still available you can phrenographic sells them uh they get reprinted quite a bit they're carl barks uncle scrooge and donald duck stories look for that you will you will love it And actually, Sam, who you're sketching for, uh, just popped in again, and he said that he met you at uh, London Forbidden Planet in possibly 2004. Yeah, that, yes, or five. Yeah, I think 2005, I think, it was when I was there. Well, good to, well, good to see you again, Sam. All right, this is all Sam. Mm -hmm. This is Bone Adventures. Earl says, keep up the wonderful work, Jeff Smith. <laughs> Thank you. You too. What's his name? First and last. Oh, I lost it. Earl Musick. You. Thank you, Earl Musick. <laughs> Mary Walker Clark says, Boneville is? is in Finders Keepers. Earl. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Go back. You're, it's Earl music. I music. know Earl. Hey, how you doing, Earl? I'm sorry. I, he said musik and I just... That's didn't. my bad. I'm, That's I apologize. All right. That's all right. So, <laughs> sorry. Hi, Earl. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming by. Sam had a great comment from earlier in the the program he says we need a 1400 page prequel to see what happened with phony say again i'm sorry we need a 1400 page prequel to find out what happened with phony <laughs> <laughs> what 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 broke phony who knows <laughs> his dad was fred trump oi <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. And yeah. just to mention to everybody who's asking about um, how to get a book signed and um, sketch, you just go to boneville.com and place your order. And in the notes section during the checkout process is where you could write your dedication and sketch request. And if you are ordering internationally, you can um, email Tom at the updates at boneville.com address and he can place your order for you. Yeah, you can, I don't need to sign that. Yeah, don't need to sign that. Gardner Troy, Jeff, can you say hi to my friend Dottie? She just joined and she is not too computer savvy to comment. <laughs> Hi, Dot, how you doing? Harold, there you go. Go ahead and just type away, it's no problem. Second red dragon of the day. Sylvia wants to know what happened to your hand while you're wearing the brace. When I finished Bone, which, as you all know, is a big, big book, I uh, I, I started to get car I got carpal tunnel syndrome, and I actually had to go to a, a doctor, and uh, he he made me wear this brace for eight months. I, no, yeah, eight months, and I wasn't allowed to draw for eight months. He says you sleep with this, you wear it when you're awake. Um, you're gonna have to turn that off because Tom's not here. Um, and if you draw, you might not ever draw again. So for eight months, I had to stop. Good news, I had not done any actual nerve damage. I had just done muscular damage, which healed. And I just don't ever want to get it again. So when I do a big signing like this, or when I draw, I wear a brace so I don't get carpal tunnel. 
Does that make sense? Absolutely. Very good. Jason wants to know, do you collect any sketches or art from other comic artists that you've met over the years? Uh, in sort of, in their books I do. Um, yeah, if I'm like, I have, I have, you know, Usagi Ujimbo books with, with drawings by Stan and then, um, uh, often at CXC or even in San Diego, I'll walk around the room or, or at SPX and I'll, I'll find somebody whose art appeals to me and I make sure I get a little sketch if I can or um, that kind of thing. Yes, I definitely do. On my wall, I, I have a original, an original Crazy Cat daily strip of Sunday Pogo and a Jack Kirby page and, and an original cover by Will Eisner. So those are just up on my wall in my studio. Uh, I'm in, we're in our living room here. We're, we're Kamakani at home. Um, but I love looking at art from other, other people. It, it, I get it. It's the, the artist touched this page. There's a real connection. I like, you know, uh, Walt Kelly touched this page. That means a lot to me. That's pretty cool. Jeff Smith, the fanboy. All right. Here, oh, I'm a fanboy, believe it or not. Okay. So here's something we dug out. Uh, the old, uh, the actual original comics from the Shazam series. And we're selling that for, as a con, at a con price, as a set. So, okay, who, who am I doing this for? This is for Jason. Uh, and for the book, we want to do a phone, phony, or, okay, either one. Let's see, this is for Jason. Can you see that? Okay, Rich. It, like, when I yep. look up, it it looks like it's getting washed out. Nope, you're bit. good. You're good. And Jake is asking, uh, what did you think about Image Comics when it was being implemented? Were you ever approached by them to bring Bone to Image? Bone was an image book for issues 20 to 28. So yes, I was, a, I was, I was an image guy. Uh, when, it was, when it was forming, uh, I had already uh, published, I think a year and a half's worth of Bone. So maybe eight or nine. I'm, I think I got to, I'd been up to the cow rates when they formed. Um, and I was a self-publisher and I'd kind of joined up with other self-publishers like Dave Sim, Colleen Doran, um, Larry Martyr, and a few other people. And so we had kind of carved out our own identity as self-publishers at that time. And then Image made their announcement and it was, it was as you know, it was, a, it was a blockbuster announcement. It was huge. But we, we got along with the, the Image guys. Uh, they were, they're self-publishing. So we had, a, we had a kinship with them. We all, we knew Todd and Eric Larson and Jim Valentino and Rob Liefeld, all those guys, Silvestri. Um, and I have some cool pictures for San Diego, which I should dig out sometime where me and the self-publishers are walking this way. And uh, I think Eric Larson and Jim Lee and a couple of the other image guys, this is like big crowds in the middle on, of the San Diego floor. And we meet. And we're all just talking and somebody got a picture and said, hey, and there's a, there's a picture of us all looking at the camera. It's pretty cool. Nice. Okay. All right. Are those the last two that are for today? All right. I'm gonna try to just be careful with these when you don't, yeah, you know. You know. That was a great story, by the way. That might be one of my favorite covers I've ever done for anything. That is awesome. Yeah, let's keep moving on that. Then. Is this the same order? No. Okay. 
All right, to Charlie. Charlie wants a bone adventures. Hey, Charlie, I hope you're watching. And he wants a smiley bone. Move it a little bit closer. Oh, sorry. There Thank we you. go. Perfect. Hey, this is a fun question. Um, Zachary is uh, talking about the Say Anything album art. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. And he asked if you met Max from the band and yes. or have you read any of, of his comic book work he's done recently? I, I have not. Met, I did. I did not meet Max Bemis. I did um, uh, over the phone and he described for me the what he would like the image to be. He wanted like, you know, it was, it was generational, you know, he wanted uh, the young versus the old, but in a comical way, you know, like old people fighting with uh, walkers and young people <laughs> fighting with diapers or something like that. Uh, and it was actually, it was, it was very fun. And I thought it was a really good album. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, I've not read any of his comic stuff. Uh, that's pretty, that's pretty unforgivable. Thank you for reminding me. I'm going to, I'll get Gib at the Laughing Ogre here in Columbus to uh, pull me up some. Well, Zach says that when he saw that cover, he knew immediately that was your work. Wow, that's kind of cool. Cool, Zach, thank you. Did we, did I make a mistake or? Yeah, yeah there, there wasn't too many. So what are we doing now? Hooray! It's our first Rassel uh, paperback. Hey! Nice. So there's, we just, we have the big hardcover, but we decided why not make, you know, which is heavy. So why not do, why not do it in paperback? And we decided to do it in three paperbacks because I'm a nut for trilogies. I'm just a nut for them. I know I love them. Lord of the Rings is a trilogy. The original Star Wars movies are a trilogy. I just love trilogies. So this is, and it's all in, uh, it's all still in the Steve Hammaker, beautiful smoky colors. Absolutely fantastic. He hasn't read them yet, so you want to do a sketch of your choice. Okay. This is book one, here we go. And what's his name? Evan. Evan. Evan, I got it. I got it. Thank you. And Derek is commenting that page 366 might be the greatest comic page of all time. In the lightning what? strike that reveals the rat creature in between the two dark panels oh. in as the dark of Bone, Grandma, Ben, and Thorn. Uh, thank you. That was a very fun one. That was in Bone 16. It was in the middle of a thunderstorm. And they're running through the forest trying to escape from the monsters. Uh, when Grandma suddenly grabs them and pulls them up and holds their head, quiets them down and a lightning strike hits and just behind them on the other side of this tree in an open field, the lightning reveals there's a ton of rat creatures. Uh, and I actually had, a, I think it was Paul Pope. Paul Pope loved that page. In fact, he redrew that page for me. I have it in my studio. There's, a, there's somebody asked earlier. Uh, I love looking at that. Paul Pope's got the greatest brush strokes on the planet. And anyway, uh, he said, you know, I was reading that thing. Is this just a headshot, a Shazam? Okay. You could, um, he said, I was, I was reading that story. And the way the panel is, grandma grabs phone bone and puts her hand over his mouth so he can't yell. And there's black behind him. And then suddenly the, there's a thunder crack and the lightning and, and the records are revealed. But in the next panel, it's just grandma and phone bone and thorn again. He can't see what's in there. And this is the greatest thing. He said, I strained 
to see it's in the dark. I strained my eyes trying to see into the ink. <laughs> I tried to see those <laughs> rat creatures in the darkness. And I was like, dude, then that panel worked. As you'll see, there's a very similarity between my uh, Captain Marvel's Shazam's and my uh, Rassel's. Just different hair. <laughs> All right, well, anyone, if anyone has a question they'd like to ask, uh, you should do it now. We're, uh, our Zoom is nearing its end. I'm gonna continue signing everyone's orders. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, but our live section for this might be getting close to done. I'll be back tomorrow uh, at two again. And we may do it longer. We may go till four tomorrow since uh, yeah, it work. seems to be just going very well i'm having a good time and if you guys are having a good time we'll do it again tomorrow till four and then again on saturday two to four um so we got a couple more minutes so if anybody has any more questions and you want to get them in there this was to this is also to evan evan said jeff that is awesome thank you and it moved on me Thank you so very much. There we go. <laughs> Angel, right. if you could imagine Ted as a, what is that, human? Ted what, as a, what uh, would he look like? <laughs> I've actually drawn that, but it's actually something I wouldn't show to a young lady. <laughs> <laughs> Just the front like this. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll draw it for you sometime in a, in a nicer version, nicer, a nice, a nice clean cut. Ted. Well, all right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, here at Comic Con at home. Yay. Uh, I had a blast. Uh, I'm Jazz. Um, but Jay, is, is the bourbon ready? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, Rich, Kathleen, Vijaya, Tom. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow at two. Tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.